Hi, this is Jen from Strapping Posh, and I am here with a Artistic Studio Creation Design Team project with La Romantique Collection from Graphic 45. And we are going to make the, this is the chipboard from the collection. We are going to make some tags. Hang on. We are going to make some charms, let's say. I'm going to take... I guess this is the biggest Sharpie I can find right now. And then you'll want an emery board. Oh, there's my big Sharpie. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to take the ones that have the... Whoops. Uh, I don't know that I want that one. That one's pretty big. I'm going to take these little ones down here. Like, they have one hole in them, and they're, like, the right size for a charm. I'm going to leave some of them, because I may have a different idea. So, first thing you do is poke out these holes. And I have... I have an awl. So um, what we can do with these is use them as dangles or charms from um, like my videos about the the dangles. Oh, what do they call them? I am going blank here. Like the tassels. That's what I've been trying to get out. Okay, now I don't need these holes. Put those to one side. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can hang these off of tags. Like a, ta a charm off of a tag. You can use them. Um, you can hang them off of cards. You can do anything with them. And you don't necessarily have to do this. But I think this makes them like more finished and more durable. So when you punch these out, they have little nubs on them where they connect to the chipboard. Let me get too closer here. And we're just taking that off. So like that, and that, and that, and that. That's what we're taking off. And if you have, I have a, a sanding sponge somewhere. You could use basically anything that will sand. So if you do these ahead of time, you don't have to worry about stopping what you're doing when you're making your book or your charms or whatever, whatever you decide to do with them. And it's fairly simple. All you need to hook them on is what you would hook anything on with, and that's just, um, maybe a jump ring would be too small for these, because you have a good half inch or so, but they have, uh, not half inch, quarter inch, three sixteenths maybe. They have bigger jump rings too that I will track down and show you. Uh, the other thing you can do is just um, put 
ribbon through it or twine if you don't have a big enough metal jump ring just use ribbon or you can use a garment pen or a safety pen would even work okay now these particular ones are like an off white or, or yeah it's like a, a tan or an off white so I am going to take my walnut stain distress oxide and I'm just gonna go along the outside of them and you don't have to do this and I like if they weren't that color like maybe you can find a color that's similar to the outside of what you have already so um, I think it adds a little depth to it if it is the same color This is like an Art Nouveau piece here. Okay, I already did that one. And you can do quite a few pieces in a small amount of time. And um, so besides the collector's edition, and like I said, the, the low, romantic, low romantic, I'm not sure if Graphic 45 is making the, I know they, they have the new ephemera packs out, so I don't know if they've stopped making the tags or the pockets maybe, or the chipboard. I think they still make the chipboard. Next thing I'm going to do, and this part's up to you, whether you want to go along the sides or not, and you can use black marker, brown, um, whatever. And I just go around the sides and then I go on back. And you can always back the pap the back with paper if you want. I don't really find it necessary. And you can also, like I said, paint this brown if you didn't want like a stark black. But I usually make my albums black base so let's see that's probably going to be okay for anything I do there's something about a black base even if it's like a, a, a light um, paper it just makes it stand out like even last year I did a Christmas album and it was really nice reds and greens and whites and bright and I did the base in black and I think it turned out better than if I would have done it in white maybe a red would have looked good Okay, so now that we have all that preliminary work done, super simple. I'm going to get a non-stick mat. And this mat here is just like a, I think it's called a Kevlar mat. I got it a 36 inch or something mat at Walmart in the baking section. So, and then we're going to use glossy accents. And I do believe Crystal sells the glossy accents in her shop. And I'm going to be using a lot of this. And I don't have... I probably got that much left. And I... Kind of... It's kind of been a pain, I guess. Because... 
it's re this one is really old and I bought a new one but I have this thing about throwing stuff away before it's empty so I'm gonna try and if I get irritated I'm going to look I missed <laughs> If I get irritated, I'll probably take the lid off and just pour it on. Let's see, where's my... There we go. Okay, so you just put a big, um, a decent size amount on it. And then you smear it around, and if you want it waterproof, sorry guys, the kitten is a muck here. If you want it waterproof, you would actually do the same to the opposite side, but I'm good with just the one side. Will you stop? Okay, so while I'm doing this, and the kitten is extremely in my way. Okay, so with the glossy accents, it's super simple. What we do is just cover the entire chipboard piece with the glossy accents. And if I haven't said it before, Crystal has these in her store. And I've had this glossy accents for, I'm going to say, at least six years. So mine has some clumps in it and such. So um, just from having it for so long and have it having been clogged and then I unclog it. And so um, all you do... Um, or at least this is how I do it. I put a layer on and kind of swirl it around, get it from edge to edge. Now, if you want it to be waterproof, then you're going to want to do it on both sides. And glossy accents is thick enough that it kind of stands up by itself, if you know what I mean. It, it's very vis viscous, so it makes a meniscus around the chipboard and won't, like, fall off the end. So, you know, I try and, like, move it a little by, you know, doing this. It's not really moving. The easiest way to do it is just to... add more and then if you end up with bubbles while it's still wet you can just take a pin and pop the bubbles and you can also move it to the edges if you have to And that will give you a really nice finish. And if you wanted, I don't know if I've said this already, sorry if I'm repeating myself. I've had to film this twice. If you, um, want it waterproof, just do the back side too. Okay, and then you just let that dry overnight's best. You can touch it within like 30 minutes, but um, just to be sure if you leave it overnight.
Okay, so everything is dry, and I want to show you some results, um, some good stuff and bad stuff. Um, I did one, I did one backside, and that's this one. Now, when you put a lot of glossy accents on even chipboard, it tends to uh, bow a little bit. And so I straighten them out, but when you straighten them out, they'll crack like that. So, um, I mean, I don't, I don't mind that. I don't think it's a deal breaker. You can see how it cracked. This one was really bent, but I'll show you here. This one here just has the one crack in it because I bent it, but I'll show you what happens. You just, you see how that cracked? That's what will happen. So again, I don't mind. I'm going to put it like in a, um, a, a dangle thing. Uh, this one I did the back of and it actually, I, I hadn't cracked it the other way and when I did the back it flattened. But when I did the back I set it on its front after it was dry. The glossy accents went through the hole and got on the front and left this like blob right here. So I'm going to use a fingernail file. I already did a little bit file that off and try and polish it. Um, this one, this one is an example of one that's bent or bowed a little bit. I didn't do the back yet, but you can see I didn't, I didn't try and force it the other way, so it's, it's okay. And then this one, this one was a big one. It does have a crack in it here, but I mean, regardless, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Now to put them on your dangles, and you've seen my dangles before, so let's just grab one. I have a video on how to make these. So super simple if you get some garment pens. Sorry, my kitten is in here mewing. Madison named the kitten Mew for the algebraic sign or the uh, trigonometry was trigonometry no physics so you just take a garment pen and put it right through the hole and then You can add it to your, and you can add as many as you want. Um, the other thing you can do if you like them on the bottom. This is the easiest way. I mean, you can use, like, I have some big eyelets here. Um, I have some big eyelets. That's a good size eyelet. I mean, you can use something like that, too. Uh, the only thing I don't like about the eyelets is it seems that the bigger the eyelet gets, the less rigid it is. So, like this one I can easily bend with my hand, and I would actually be scared that that would fall off. I think the garment pens are the best way to go on these because of the, the distance um, between... Yeah, see, you could do that, but I, I just don't trust these eyelets here for anything that may have any kind of pressure on it. So, yep, I think this is the best way to do it. Get your garment pen, stick it on there. Um, if you want to put it on the bottom. All right, and there you go. So those are your... Your now... Um, petrified I don't know what you want to call it like if you just put the chipboard on there it's just chipboard it could break it could fray it could get wet um, and if you do it this way I think that it is um, more like a, a charm so especially if you do the back if you do the back and the front then it, it's pretty much waterproof I mean, there's a possibility that the side could get wet and then it could peel apart, but 
if you if, if that happens you have other issues because the whatever book you have it on or, or letter or whatever is going to be soaked too so all right there you go there is my um our artistic studio creations design team project using the uh, graphic 45 la romantique collection and you can do this with any chipboard elements that you get but head on over and grab this uh collector's edition before it's gone i'm going to do some more cool stuff with it and we'll see you next time